Good morning. Have you ever wondered if you could hear from God? I'm here to share with you how we hear from God and more importantly, why sometimes we don't. <clears throat> I'm Crystal Roy with the Kingdom Exchange and thank you for joining me this morning. Let's talk about some controversies. Some people believe that we cannot hear from God outside the Bible and that he stopped talking to people. So I challenge you. I'm going to use the Wesleyan quadrilateral. The Wesleyan quadrilateral to challenge you. So first of all, is that scriptural? No, because the Bible is full of God speaking directly to man. As a matter of fact, Amos 4.13 is God's resume. Where God says he shares his thoughts with men. That's not... Specific men like disciples or specific men like apostles, preachers, or those kinds of things. This is just you and me. So it's not scriptural to say that God is not speaking today because that would mean God changed. And the scripture says he does not change. So why are some of the reasons... Uh, that we don't hear from God in really specific ways about how to walk out our lives as Christians, as his sons and daughters, and to have kingdom results in our lives, for our lives, for the kingdom of God. Let's jump in. You and I are supposed to be like Christ in every way. Uh, even our bodies are supposed to be changed like Christ like his body, every time we take communion. When I take communion, it is a remembrance of Jesus, but it's also very powerful because I am remembering that I have exchanged my life for his life, my blood for his blood, and that's the blood on the mercy seat. I didn't pour my blood out on the mercy seat for my sins, but the Father did that for Jesus and me so that we could be together and be one. And then my physical body, I believe, should be like the physical body of Christ, which means youthful and healthy, free from disease and every infirmity. Because that's what the Bible says, that by his stripes, I am healed. So when I take in that element that represents the body of Christ, I am making witness with heaven that I have and I am the body of Christ. That my body should be like his, free from disease, infirmity, sickness, and strong with strength and stamina to match my days. And I know the Bible talks about Moses, who was 120 years old when he died, his eyesight not dim, nor his natural force diminished. I'm going to live like that. <clears throat> I want to tell you that I recently had an eye appointment, and I had 2017 <clears throat> in one eye and 2010 in another. That's better than I had as a teenager. And um, that's awesome. Then when I take in the blood of Christ, I'm taking in his DNA. I'm taking in the longevity, the strength, the power, the stamina, that I can live long and prosper, <laughs> like Spock says, but also that I live long and prosper in strength and health. And, and my responsibility to that, of course, is to eat right, eat well, like, um, I drive a very, I'm not going to say vintage car, but it's older. It's 13 years old. So obviously I don't put in low octane gasoline because its engine needs the higher octane. And I don't ignore my oil changes. I don't ignore my fluids to make sure everything is proper levels. And uh, mysteriously it's losing oil, but not leaking. So it has to be topped off in between oil changes. And I'm really careful with my car. And God has blessed me. That car has over 220,000 miles on the same motor and the same transmission. 
<laughs> and I'm going to be like that car. And then one day I'm going to trade it in for a new car and I'm going to trade in this for the new body. But for now, to do the kingdom work, I must put in what is going to help my body perform at peak, right? And we can hear from God about what to eat, literally. Um, you know, stand in the refrigerator and ask, I'm not saying for God to micromanage your life. You have a brain, right? And what, what you put in your refrigerator should be great things. What you put in your pantry should be great things. But ask the Lord, what is right for my body? Because I have a specific DNA. So let's talk today about why some people don't hear and then how to hear from God to be transformed. And of course, we're transformed by the renewing, the making new again our mind. And literally, there are some foods that you eat that can, I would say, shortchange your mind. You can become cloudy from eating too much dairy. You can become cloudy from eating too much wheat. There are many things that we overdo that cause us to have some problems with our bodies. And if your physical mind is having some trouble, and then there are, of course, other diseases and so on, um, your spiritual mind also can be affected by what you put in it. So what are you watching on TV? Are you doing entertainment without your God time? Reward yourself with fun things. But don't get so entertained that it detains you from entering into the presence of God. Rest is good. Rest is important. It helps you regroup. It even can help you get away from a circumstance and problem solve. I remember one time I was negotiating in a real estate transaction and we were just a thousand dollars apart and both parties, the buyers and the sellers were willing to die on that thousand dollar mountain, which, you know, was foolish. And I needed to get away for a minute. I needed to get away from the office. I needed to get away from the circumstances. I needed to get away from my own lack of solutions. So I realized I needed a few things for the house and I jumped in the car to run an errand to go buy, you know, household things. I think not foods, but I might have needed a new potato peeler or something. I jumped in the car to run and get something and just on the way out of my past environment, on the way to grab what I needed for the house, it occurred to me that if we could go under contract right now, that the seller would not have to make their next mortgage payment because we would be closing and that would save a thousand dollars out of their pocket. So I called the agent. I said, hey, I have a solution. If we can go under contract today, the seller won't be needing to make their mortgage payment, which was probably a little over $1,000, right? And we can close um, before their mortgage payment is technically due. And I think this is a solution to our problem. So she called the seller and the seller agreed and the buyer was happy. The seller was happy. Everybody moved forward. There was no, there were no delays. Now this was before things were selling in 24 hours. Um, but it was something that the Lord brought to my attention once I got out of that stressful and by necessity, right? That's my job. I manage everybody's problems all day long. I solve multiple million dollar solutions every day for other people. And I had to step away so I could hear, right? And sometimes we have to be very careful about what we're letting in and say stop, put up the stop sign, and step away so you can hear. So let's talk about that today. I want to especially focus on the seer gift. I am a seer. In other words, even in the natural with information, I don't learn auditorially. I don't take in and process information best by hearing it. I do that by seeing it. Um, like lectures in college, a lot of information thrown at you, overwhelming, but I took the parts that I felt were important and I laid them out on a page. So visually, even later when I was not with my paper, I could refer to it and meditate on it. 
So it's a little bit of like photographic memory as well. And I try not to use that part of my brain because it can be very overwhelming to, to look at something for a second, remember everything on that page. I don't utilize that a lot. I do have the ability somewhat to do that. Uh, but if I lay out a lecture on a page um, with the way my brain works, I'm formatting the auditory into the visual. And now even later, I can refer back to that page in my brain if I'm not in front of the book. Um, I do highlight with bullets. I have a great friend, Rebecca, who can tell you every detail. Now, I don't go that far. It's not necessary for me, but I highlight the bullets and then I solve the problems. But I want to talk to you today about the seer gift in the kingdom of God. So some of us take in in the natural information better through our eyes. So we see it formatted on a page. We can retain it better and then we can access it, right? We can pull it back out. I'm not auditory, so I have to convert to visual. I am not kinesthetic, so I don't put, I don't retain information by doing busy work, like even clicking a watch. I don't click a watch to learn. Um, I was one time sitting in church between my late husband and my second son, and they were both clicking their little click, 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 click on their watch closures, both of them, as we were sitting in church. And I was like, overstimulated so I just took a hand and I placed a hand on each of their legs just touched the thigh and they both realized what they were doing and they stopped for them they had to be kinesthetically doing something to process the auditory but that was a distraction to me so I just gently put my hand on each of their thighs and they got it and so they stopped what they were doing that was loud and probably my husband twirled his ring, right? That's still kinesthetic while you're taking in auditory information. Um, these types of learners typically learn by doing instead of hearing or seeing. And then one of my sons um, is balanced on all three. He can take in and process information either of these three ways equally well. And one of my sons is totally auditory. He would sit in class and doodle, 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 doodle because he was listening. And I once got a call from the sweet little first year teacher to say we need a teacher's um, parent teacher meeting. So I went in and said, oh, what's happening? And she said, he's doodling. And I'm like, well, you just sent home his stack of papers stapled together and he made a hundred and everything. So why is this a problem? That's how he processes information auditorily. So he's not looking at taking notes and he's just being a boy. He's suffering from B-O-Y, right? So how do you learn best? That could be how God also speaks to you. But today we're going to focus on the seer gift. Now, I challenge you to ask the Lord through the Wesleyan quadrilateral is what I'm teaching true. So that means, first of all, is it scriptural? Has God ever spoken to anybody through showing them something? In the natural, in their dreams, in a vision? Well, of course, the Bible is full of those examples. And unless God changed, he is still doing that today. So, logically, does God talk to us in pictures? Of course, because some of us are visual in the way we take in and process information. Does it fit with um, you know, the tradition of the apostles, the, the tradition of the disciples? It certainly does. And then experience. Are there testimonies or stories of men, great men of God who have heard from God in these ways? Yes. So it actually does fit with all four criteria of the Wesleyan quadrilateral, which is scripture first, tradition. Can we go back in time and see that it's always been true for all people? Um, is it reasonable? We have the faculty of seeing. God has is a creator. When he made you and me creators, one of the ways he's going to speak to us is through what we see. And then is the experience proving true through history? Yes. Okay. So let's talk about the seer gift. <clears throat> the seer gift, and I have this gift, you see in pictures. The Holy Spirit gives you one simple picture. And you know exactly what he's talking about. It may be a key to more revelation, but it's, it's something that you visually see. 
you don't hear it it's not in your heart the Lord is not speaking in your heart he gives you a flash of a picture and next is visions and dreams God gives us visions and dreams the Spirit gives you a series of pictures or events which may include all five senses so in some of our dreams we see smell feel like emotions we hear we taste and we touch and then confirming signs the spirit uses things in the world around you to speak to you and confirm what you've heard what you've already seen um, what you read in the Bible this week then the Lord gives you an opportunity with a confirming sign that it it was a direction that he's sending you on trances or open visions this is scriptural don't tear out those pages you're gonna need them the vision is happening all around you and has a special quality in that you're in it I've had this happen when the Lord was delivering me from anger and giving me a revelation about what anger had done to my children to their spirits he said actually he didn't say to their souls he didn't say to their minds he didn't say to their wills or their emotions. He just told me every time that you, re you here's what he specifically said. I want to I share this because I want you to heal and grow. He said, every time you scream at your children, this is what that does to their spirits. And he, I physically felt the trauma in my entire body. Of someone breaking in and completely dumping over an entire house and uh, nothing was happening the Lord had just given me a, a one scene vision with two actions like 1001 it was done it was an open vision I was fully awake I was sitting up in the bed I was talking to the Lord I was reading my Bible my children were in their rooms quietly reading just like I told them to and God gave me an open vision of what screaming did to their spirits. And here's the last one for today. Translation or ascension. The Lord brings you into a specific place while in the spirit to show you something, often in the heavenly realms. Now, before you say, hmm, that's not scriptural, or for today, remember, does God change? No, God does not change. And even greater, Jesus said we would do everything he did and greater. So Jesus disappeared in a crowd. They were out to kill him. You've seen violence. You've seen violence on, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, on TV. Someone who is the target of a violent crime does not disappear into the crowd. They're beaten sometimes to death. But Jesus actually translated. And certainly the Bible said he ascended. So since we are to be like Christ, let's ascend together. Let us ascend, bringing, allowing the Lord to bring us into a specific place in the spirit. And John said, in the spirit or in the flesh, I don't know, but I want to obey God. I want to do everything he's called me to do. Because God wants to show us something often in the heavenly realms. And if you'd like this, um, it's actually a one-pager. And I want you to take some time this week and share about, in your notebook, in your journal, where you have experienced these as a seer. So pictures, again, just a quick review. Pictures, the Spirit gives you one simple picture or vision. When I first received this myself, the first, the first time I remember I was 12 years old. There may have been something before that, but this was life-changing. It put me on a trajectory for my whole life, and it changed uh, the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God. And that is my assignment. That's your assignment. Our assignment is to plunder the gates of hell. And I want to share how to do that. So we're walking today through the seer gift. So take a notebook, take some time this week, get with the Lord and ask him to remind you of any time that he has shown you a picture that was from him. Just a, a fleet, it could be a fleeting glance of a scene. 
could be a dream, vision or a dream. Could be a confirming sign. Um, of course, if you're out to look for something, you're going to see it everywhere, right? We need to be wise to walk in the will of God. But we need to ask the Lord for confirming signs for the things around you that speak to you. And then write down any time that you've had an open vision where either you were uh, awake and you had a flash of wisdom visually or you were perhaps asleep and your dream was the actual setup and circumstances of your office, your car, your house. So you know when we have dreams about our home, it looks it's not your actual I can walk through and navigate my floor plan. But if it is a trance or a vision, you will be able to walk around and navigate your floor plan. That's how you identify if it's a trance or a vision. And then a translation or ascension. So the Lord brings you to a specific place while in the spirit. So as we wrap up today, I want to challenge you to seek the Lord, right? Ask the Lord to give you the Bible verses to support this or to correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong. I am open to correction, but I want to bless you today. I want to pray as we go. So Father, your word says that you don't change. And your word says that you sent Jesus for us and that your word also says that we will do what Jesus did and greater. And I can't imagine anything greater, Father, than to obey you and to glorify you like John 17, 4 says, to glorify you by completing my assignment. Lord, I ask you to speak to me in all of these ways that I've talked about today to complete who I am as a person. And Lord, if there's anything that I put before my eyes that is preventing me from seeing what you want me to see in the Spirit, I repent, but that's not enough. I confess my sin, and your word says to confess your sin one to another that you may be healed. And so, Father, give each of us a true heart friend to whom we can wisely, confidentially confess our sin one to another that we may be healed because in the spirit that breaks open barred doors. It disarms the enemy. It brings our sin out of darkness and into light and that Satan can no longer hold over us as an accuser of the brethren. Father, we bless you. We thank you. Help me to be more acutely aware of your presence in my life today and show me what you want me to see in Jesus' name. If this ministry has helped you step out of not knowing what your assignment is for the Lord into dying to yourself because the only good Christian is a dead Christian, I'd love for you to share with me about that. Share with me how the Kingdom Exchange has called you out of unawareness into light or helped you exchange something that was not God for the true and living God. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Have a great day. Bye-bye.